Hello everybody and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. Today's story is all about the ocean. In fact, it's all about the water in the ocean. But I'm going to tell that story by showing you one of my favorite rocks. It's a rock that I call my water rock. And it's this one right here. Let me pick this up and bring it a little bit closer that you, so you can see it and draw a nice picture. So my water rock is green in color. It's kind of a dull green. It has some darker green and lighter green parts to it, some yellowy green. But it's kind of shiny and smooth on the surface. Can you tell that? Shiny and smooth. And if you turn it like this, it's kind of flat. Kind of like layery, except those layers, they're kind of wavy. See that? Ooh, that was a big hand. It's kind of wavy layers like that. Not straight. Here's the bottom. More shiny, wavy layers. In fact, those wavy layers remind some people of like a snake or a serpent slithering along. That's one of the reasons why we call this green rock and the mineral which dominates this green rock, we call it serpentine because it's kind of snaky like a serpent. So that word serpent is in the name of this rock. Serpentine, what a beautiful rock. This one is from the state of California. Did you know that this is the state rock of California is serpentine? Very interesting. There's a lot of serpentine you can find in California, but I told you that this was a water rock. Now let me tell you why. This is a water rock because inside this rock, there is 15% water. And what does that look like? It looks like this. You see the water in there? Right now in this rock, there is that much water inside the serpentinite right now, inside that serpentine. Isn't that incredible? So much water inside that rock? Here, I'll put those right there to show you. Now, I'd love to be able to do an experiment to show you that there's water in there, like I use the acid to get the CO2 gas out of our climate rock. But our water rock holds on much more tightly to its water. I would have to cook that in an oven up to six, seven, eight hundred degrees Celsius to boil off all that water. But I want to tell you the story of where that water came from, because it came from the ocean. And to tell this story, I want to go to a different ocean. I want to imagine an ocean in Europe, between Europe and Africa. We call it the Mediterranean Sea today, but if we go back 50, 100 million years ago, it was much bigger and broader and deeper, and it was called the Tethys Sea. Or I suppose that's what the dinosaurs would have called it, because this was the time of the dinosaurs in the Great Tethys Seaway. That ocean, the bottom of the ocean, the rock at the very bottom of the ocean, covered with water, is actually made of basalt. Remember all our basalt rock? And below that basalt, if we go deep enough, we get into the mantle rock. This green stuff, that peridotite. What happens is that that rock sits on the bottom of the ocean for so long and sometimes it gets cracked up and all cracked and fractured. And sometimes the water from the ocean leaks down and it leaks down through the basalt and then it leaks down even further through those cracks and it gets into the mantle peridotite. Guess what happens when you mix green peridotite with ocean water? You make serpentine, our water rock. And then the story gets even more interesting. That serpentine water rock, as that Tethys Seaway between Europe and Africa started to get pushed and squeezed together, those plates were moving and pushing, and it actually pushed the Tethys Seaway. It pushed that serpentine rock down underneath Europe, and it crumpled up, crumpled up, and it made a mountain, the huge Alps, and some of that serpentine got poked up into the top of the mountains. And I want to show you some pictures of some research that I did with my friends to find serpentine from the bottom of the ocean in the top of the mountains.
Look at these pictures. So my friends and I went on an expedition. It was a National Science Foundation expedition. And we climbed towards this mountain in Italy. That mountain is called Mount Viso. In France, we call it Mont Viso. And in Italy, we call it Monte Viso, depending on your accent and which language you speak. But Mount Viso has a beautiful view. And we had to climb a long way. And in fact, it was very foggy during the day. We had to go through the fog and the mist and the clouds. We were inside the clouds. You could barely see where we were going. And we got to one place where there was a rocky cliff. And we sent two people in our group. You could just see them there to get a view of what was ahead. And as the clouds started to lift there, Mount Viso in the distance. And we climbed higher to see the mountain. There it is. Now the trees and the grasses are gone. We went higher, climbing even past ice and snow. And near the top, near the base of the mountain, but up at the top, we looked back. And there in the distance, we were above the clouds. We climbed above the clouds to find serpentine from the ocean. Isn't it amazing? that we can climb to the top of the ocean. There we go. Excuse me. We can climb to the top of the mountains to find rocks from the bottom of the ocean and rocks that have carried the water from the ocean all the way to the top of the mountains. We are studying what happens to this ocean water that gets into our water rock, our serpentine. What happens to that water when it gets, we call it subducted, when it goes under the, under the continents, the oceans go under, they get subducted under. And sometimes things happen to that water down here or little chunks come up here. We're studying what does that water do? Now I have some other rocks that I'll tell more of that story about, but what if I told you that some of that water makes the volcanoes blow higher? What if I told you that some of that water makes the earthquakes rumble stronger? And what if I told you that some of that water helps to make the continents themselves that are made out of granite? We talked about the other day. The story of water in the earth is one of the most important stories of all. We drink water for ourselves to stay alive. The fish live and swim in the water. Water makes ice in the winter, it rains in the summer. And in the deep earth, water can create earthquakes, volcanoes, and all the rock on the continents themselves. I will tell you more stories about water in the earth and in rocks later on. But today, let's remember this water rock and this water rock and before we go this is the special sample of serpentine that we collected my friends and i when we got to the top of the mountains in the italian alps serpentine water rock i hope you like this story see you next time